Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani, my fabric and haberdashery shop. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of my tips and advice for matching checks and plaids in your dressmaking projects. And I get asked about this a lot, how to match checks. And it can be quite an overwhelming thing to sort of think about or kind of tackle. Like it might seem like it's quite complicated, but hopefully through this video and with the blog post that goes along with this video as well which I'll put a link to in the description to it I will explain everything to you just so that you can have an idea of what's actually involved and whether it is something that you feel like you really want to get your teeth into. So I am going to use the example of the Green Line Archer shirt in order to explain the process of matching checks and plaids. That's the shirt pattern that I'm wearing at the moment. But all of the tips and advice that I share are applicable to any type of project that you would be making, whether it's like a simple top or a slightly different style of blouse or shirt pattern pattern or even like a jacket or something like that so so yeah although I'll be referencing the pattern pieces and everything that are in the green line archer shirt all of that all of those principles will be applicable to any project that you are working on so my first bit of advice before we really get into the nitty-gritty of it is is that check or plaid matching does take quite a long time and you do need quite a lot of patience to do it as well and really you need to enjoy those kind of like detailed processes where you're sort of like thinking about something and how it will come together and kind of what the final outcome will be. And you need to just generally be okay with it taking a bit longer and you having to be patient. So really my first bit of advice is just have a think about whether you'll enjoy that process or not. Sewing and dressmaking should be enjoyable and if it's gonna really stress you out, then it might be worth focusing your efforts on a different type of fabric for your projects or it might just be worth embracing the checks not matching, which can be a thing as well. So, so yeah, have a little think about that before you do start. Then if you are dead set on going ahead, my next general bit of advice is please don't be hard on yourself. If you look at anything that you would buy ready to wear in the shops, um, garments, clothes, whatever they are, you will probably find that they are not check matched to exact perfection. You know, you're really looking at like very, very high end designer couture garments that are gonna be like check matched within, you know, the millimeter um, of perfection. Don't, don't strive for utter perfection enjoy the process um, and and yeah just just embrace any you know sort of slight imperfections i have actually put one of the kylie and the, kylie and the machine little labels in my garment and um, which says is it on this pocket no it's on this one which says imperfect because i spent a long time check matching this shirt and I felt like it still wasn't completely perfect. So I just embraced it. Um, and literally nobody else can tell where it's not exact. Um, so yeah, generally don't be hard on yourself. Now, there are a couple of things to consider before you really get into your project that might make things a bit easier, especially if it's the first time that you're matching checks. The first one is the type of project that you choose. So the simpler the pattern pieces, the fewer the pattern pieces, the easier it's going to be. So if it is just like a really simple top that's got a front and a back, maybe a grown on sleeve or a front and a back with just a simple sleeve, and it's you know it's just got maybe some bust starts or something then that is going to be nice and easy to check match because you're just dealing with less pieces you know there's less sort of bits of the jigsaw puzzle that have to go together so you can definitely sort of dabble in check making check matching without a full-on shirt like this and it will be a little bit easier the next thing that you can consider which can also make things a little bit easier in general as well is considering using the bias on certain parts of your garment too. So that might be cutting the check the, the checks for the pockets or the back yoke out on the bias so they're at sort of at 45 degrees and then that means they don't need to sort of match everything else. You could, I guess you could do that with the cuffs as well. So, so yeah, depending on the type of garment you're making, there might be elements of it that you can cut on the bias and then that eliminates you having to exactly check match those pieces. And then also it's worth noting the size of your checks as well. If your checks are pretty small, then it might be that it's not actually really worth like specifically 
matching them as long as you're cutting everything out straight on the grain and the checks are sort of running square then it'll probably be fine the larger the check or the plaid then obviously the more obvious that the, the matching or non-matching is going to be so that's another thing that you can have a think about have a look at when you're planning your project is the size of the checks as well now i want to just explain the difference between check and plaid before we get into it because I have to admit, I generally sort of use the, 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 the words check and plaid quite interchangeably. I don't know if that's a UK thing maybe. Um, I feel like they, to me, they kind of mean the same thing, but they are different. So a check technically is when something is just two colors and the stripes that run parallel to the selvage and at 90 degrees to it are the same stripes. So then, you know, it sort of just makes it much more even, you know, the, the, check, the check itself is even. Whereas a plaid has more than two colours and also the stripes that run parallel and at 90 degrees to the selvage are sort of varying and different as well. So then you get much more sort of intricate and different and varying patterns. So, so yeah, the, the, the fabric that I'm actually wearing at the moment is a plaid because it's got multiple colours in it and the stripes in it that, that, that cross each other are all a little bit different. Um, now, the next thing that you can consider when you are having a look at your check versus, pl versus plaid is whether it is even or uneven. So the way to test whether you have an even or an uneven plaid is to fold your fabric with the selvages together like this and you want to match up the print and then you pull the top corner back so that you have a right angle triangle like this and if your check is even then the pattern will be continued and be completely unbroken if it's uneven then the pattern repeat will appear broken so the one that i'm using here if you look closely at first it looks like it is even but then on closer inspection, when you look at those yellow lines there, they don't continue. They end up being on opposite sides of the other lines and that breaks up the pattern and that makes it uneven. So because of that, it's important which way up you cut your fabric. So almost as like an extra layer of matching, I guess, that you have to sort of build into it. So, so yeah, that is the fabric that I'm going to be cutting out. The, the green line archer shirt with and explaining all of the process of, of how you go about matching these checks and um, but but it, but I think it's useful to be aware and know that there are different types of plaid and different types of you know uneven even that sort of thing so it's good to kind of know what you're working with before you get stuck in another question that you might be thinking is if I have got to match checks or plaids, how much extra fabric do I need? Now, that is a really hard one to answer. Obviously, there can be lots of variables in that. The width of the fabric, what you're making, the size you're making, the design and cut of the, of the garment that you're making as well. So, so it's, there's not like a simple, straightforward answer. I would say as a minimum, you're likely to need half a meter. But if it is quite a large repeat and there are quite a lot of pattern pieces, then probably getting a bit more than that just to be on the safe side. I suppose it depends, you know, you're going to have to weigh up things like how easy is it to get more of the fabric if you run out, how expensive the fabric is, all of those sorts of things will come into it. So there's no sort of hard and fast rule necessarily. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's generally going to be safer just to buy a decent chunk more than what your pattern recommends and and then it's likely that you have some left over that maybe you could you know you could use for something else okay so now i'm going to start the process of actually cutting out the green line archer shirt which is the example pattern that i'm going to use to explain to you the process of matching checks and the specific features of this shirt are that it's got a button band down the front that is a separate bit of fabric. So you have to actually cut a, a rectangle of fabric that gets sewn onto the right, right front bodice. So that needs matched. It's also got a back yoke. And then as obviously it's got the sleeves, it's got the cuffs, it's got a collar, a traditional sort of stand collar as well. So it's got all of those elements. And as I said before, it might be that you're making a garment that doesn't have exactly those features. Maybe the button band is, is, is just folded back on itself to create it, to create that sort of placket button band section. Um, or it might be that you're making you know, something much simpler. So 
seeing seeing it on you know a fairly involved garment like this that does have all of those pieces will hopefully cover pretty much all the bases of whatever garment you're working working on yourself and then you can apply those principles to that the key thing is cutting out if you cut it out and you 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 really focus on matching the checks as you cut out the sewing part actually then becomes fairly straightforward and you can use the checks to your advantage when you're coming to then sew it together as well so so really the main sort of chunk of investment in time and patience and energy is the cutting out stage because you do have to cut it out on the single layer so before i actually start putting my pattern pieces onto my fabric i always draw a grid onto them so i will draw lines that are parallel and 90 degrees to the grain line or the fold line if it's a piece that's cut on the fold and i would say you know as a rough estimate say on like a bodice piece you want to be doing like four to five lines horizontally up and down that are just they don't need to necessarily match the checks at this point they just need to be at 90 degrees to the grain line or the center front if that's a straight edge and then you want some vertical lines as well so you'd have your grain line one i would extend that so it goes the full length of the pattern piece and then i would say you know add in another sort of two to three if it's a really sort of full garment then maybe four um, so you know approximately they're maybe going to be about this much spaced apart and though you want to do that on all your pattern pieces and that is really going to help you to make sure that as you cut out these checks or plaids that the, the, the lines in the check and plaid are square to each other and it, it really really helps with with getting everything nice and straight so as i mentioned before you will be cutting your fabric out on the single layer so you need to get it washed and pressed slash ironed completely flat so don't iron any creases or folds in it or anything like that totally totally flat nice and fresh and crisp and that will really help as well in terms of accuracy and i generally cut with the right side of the fabric facing me as well now if you're making a check or a plaid and I would say like nine times out of 10, that, that checker plaid will be woven into the fabric. So it means that you'll be able to see it on both sides of it anyway. Um, sometimes you can get checks and plaids that are printed onto the fabric, in which case you might only see it from one side. Obviously you want that side facing up as you cut out. So, so yeah, just make sure that you're clean and happy, that you can like really see your, see your checks as you're cutting out you need to use them to cut out another good tip is to really make sure that you are like labeling and marking each piece as you cut it out so you know writing on a little bit of paper left front bodice right you know at the outside so that you know that when you come to to actually use that bit of the fabric in construction that you've got the right you know left versus right correct and that you've also got inside facing and outside facing correct as well so just labeling them up as you go will then really help later and you're not sort of working out well where did this go again and then as a general rule you would always start with the pattern piece in your garment that is the most visible and the most central and the most prominent so that's typically whatever is running down the center front of your garment because that is like the most that's kind of like the bit that's sort of most obvious so in this case it's the it's the button band the front placket down the middle and then another sort of general tip is that if you're cutting out any pieces that are rectangular or you know they are quite straight um, like the cuffs for example they're just a rectangle it's probably going to be easier just to match your pattern piece up and then follow the lines of the check to cut it out rather than you know placing lots of pins to hold the bit of paper onto the fabric because you're just cutting it a rectangle anyway and the lines of the checker plaid are rectangular so you'll be able to follow them to get it sort of nice and straight and square if you are cutting out something where say it's something that's gathered so maybe you've got like a bodice with a gathered peplum or a gathered skirt or something then obviously you're not going to be able to match the checks everywhere there i would say just match the center one um, and and then everything will just sort of even out from there on and then you can match the side seams as well you know we'll come to that later and um, but that's just that's just something to be aware of if you're sort of fitting two bits of fabric together that aren't actually the same size it's like you need to kind of pick whatever the dominant central part of that pattern piece is going to be and make sure that that's matched 
Okay, so let's actually get into cutting now. The, as I said before, the first part that we're going to cut out for the grain line archer shirt is that front button band, that front placket that goes down the centre front of the garment. And what you need to do is find the centre, the centre front line that goes down the middle of it. And really what you have to do is think about once this, once this is sewn together, what is the central line? And that might not always be worked on, that might not always be uh, labelled or sort of marked on your pattern necessarily. Sometimes it's marked with a notch, sometimes it is marked with a line. It might be that you have to find it yourself. And in order to find it yourself, you might almost have to like pin or kind of place paper pattern pieces together and sort of visualise, read on in your instructions, visualise, okay, how do these bits go together? What, what am I actually going to see? What is the finished bit that is exposed of this bit of fabric I'm cutting? out and then then go with that so to work out where the center front is within this this placket pattern piece I took the seam allowances off the edge that will join the bodice and then marked ha halfway between this and the center fold line my seam allowance here is in red and I've marked the center front in black which is in line with those buttonhole markings so the center front line should be positioned in the middle of two lines or in the middle of a dominant line on your fabric, especially if you're using an uneven check. So I folded the pattern piece back at the center front line, aligned that fold with the dominant line that I decided I wanted to follow, pinned along this line first before then folding the pattern piece back down, making sure all the rest of the lines were straight so you can use your grid lines here. And you might need to shift your fabric a little to do this. Just look for where those checks intersect, those grid lines that you drew on the pattern piece. And I found, especially with this fat, the, the particular fabric on the one that I've that I'm actually wearing, it is a twill weave, and the checks are woven into the fabric. And it was almost like the twill weave was making the fabric like squiff a little bit, and I really had to manipulate it. So don't be don't be fearful of being like assertive with the fabric and really sort of moving it and manipulating it so that it matches those all those sort of straight grid lines that you've got in your pattern piece and that you're pinning all of them as well to make sure that what you cut out really is nice and square and straight. Aside from the grain line archer pattern if you are making something where it's just one bodice piece on the front of the garment and it's cut on a fold do still cut it out on the single layer because you'll need to make sure it's a nice mirror image of each other. You can never fold a fabric and make sure that the checks are, are lined up. Everything will just move around. It's much better to cut it on the single layer and then flip the piece over, which is what we'll do with the back bodice on the Archer shirt. Okay, so once you've got that first bit cut out, the next bit I'm going to cut out is the right front bodice. So that's the right as I'm wearing the garment because it is going to get sewn onto that button band, that front placket. So we need to make sure that the checks match into that. Now, on the grain line archer, the center front is actually marked on this front bodice piece, which is a slight coincidence. It just so happens that because of the width of the button placket, the button band itself, which is an inch, and the seam allowance being half an inch on this pattern, that actual sort of cut cut edge, um, that what which will end up being the raw edge effectively on like the right front bodice happens to be the center front line but it might not always be like that so if it's not the way to work it out is to first fold back the seam allowance at the edge of the front bodice then on the placket fold back the seam allowance on the pattern piece where it will join the bodice so that you know where the stitching line will be then you need to take your bodice and align the folded back edge with this same point and just make sure that the horizontal lines at the top and bottom of the bodice and the placket also match as well. Then you're going to fold the front seam allowance back down and pin it in place and then pin round everywhere else just making sure that your grid lines that you drew across the pattern piece are nice and straight. So once I've got my right front bodice cut out, then I'm going to move on to my left front bodice. So my left front bodice has a folded back button band. So I folded this into position as it would be once it's sewn and then folded it out of the way as the whole button band will be hidden under the top placket once it's sewn. Then you want to fold the cut placket pattern piece at the fold line to reveal where the placket will meet the bodice when the shirt is being worn. 
then align that folded edge of the left front bodice with the same point and pin along the fold line as before. Then fold the button band back down and pin everything else in place. Again, make sure that that top and bottom is the same as it is on the placket and the rest of the fabric is straight, again, using your grid lines. So it's gonna mean that your right front bodice and your left front bodice aren't necessarily like mirror images of each other. It really depends on what type of and size of check or plaid that you've got. So it's not just like you make this one the same as this one. You have to look at what's happening in the continuation of the check as it will run into that left front bodice once that front button band placket is, you know, is folded and sewn in place. So once you've got your fronts cut out, the next is the back bodice. And it's a little bit easier to match because what you're gonna do for the back bodice is just make sure that as you look at the side seam, your check is running on the same level. Now, if you have got any sort of like shaping or curving at all in your side seam, you know, it depends what sort of cut your garment has, it's not necessarily that the checks are gonna match like exactly across, because you just can't match curves when checks are straight lines. So as long as it's like, you know, say there's like a dominant sort of horizontal line that you can see in your checker plaid, that that is then running into the back bodice as well. So you wanna make sure that the center back is either on a dominant line or in between two lines. And then, as I mentioned before, because it's cut in the fold, you need to still cut it out in the single layer. You're lining up the fold line with that dominant line. And then once that's in position, you need to look at the side seam. So the bottom corner needs to be in the same horizontal line as on the front bodices. And it may also be in the same line as the underarm seam. But if, you're, if your pattern has a bust dart, then obviously it won't because the dart will offset it a little bit. So just, so the key one is the bottom, work up from the bottom because anything that's sort of under your arm will be a little bit more hidden anyway, whereas lower down is obviously a bit more of a visible part of your garment. So pin all the way around. Again, you have to make sure that the grid lines on, that are on your pattern piece are matching up with those checks and then you want to cut around that pattern piece but obviously not down the center back if it's a piece that's cut out on the fold then you can unpin your pattern piece flip the fabric over and just roll it down to align that second side so you can really make sure that it's exactly the same make sure the checks all match up here go around the outer edge of the fabric making sure that they match and then you can pin it in place and then you're kind of using that half to then cut round it again and that gives you your full full piece. Then the next part, once you've got that main back bodice piece cut out is the back yoke. Now, because there is a pleat in the bottom back bodice part on this garment, then obviously the checks aren't gonna match all the way across the, the back yoke. So you would just make sure that the center dominant line is matched. But what I'm actually gonna do on this one, just to show you something a little bit different, is cut it out on the bias. So if you're cutting it out in the bias, you effectively have to sort of draw in new grid lines and grain lines to help you get it lined up correctly with the check. And you would also want to stabilize it in some way as well. So I would cut the outer one on the bias. There's two back yokes. The outer one's on the bias, then the inside one is just on the regular straight grain and it's on the inside so technically it doesn't really need to be pattern matched but you could pattern match if you wanted it by matching up that center dominant line. So it's probably a bit easier to draw out the full pattern piece like I've done here and then I use the 45 degree mark on my quilting ruler to draw those grid lines onto it so I use these to align with my print and just make sure that the whole piece had the correct grain. And then obviously when you're cutting your inner yoke and you're cutting on the straight grain, you would just ignore those diagonal lines. They're only for when you're cutting it out on the bias. Now the next part is the sleeves. And I would suggest not going to the extent of sort of working out where the stitching lines are and when they're gonna come. As long as you've got your check sort of running on the same horizontal line from the bodice into the sleeve, then that is gonna still be effective enough in looking like a really well check matched garment. To work out what line will intersect at the notch on the sleeve, take your pattern piece and measure the seam allowance in 
at the front single notch so this should be at 90 degrees to the, the raw edge or the cut edge and then just put a little dot here and then when you come to actually cut your sleeve you need to look at where the notch is on the bodice and we want to line up the dot on the sleeve with the same line as where the notch is on the bodice armhole so you can put a pin through the dot to see where it's hitting underneath pin it into position and then just check that all the grid lines on your sleeve match up with your checks straight and horizontally before pinning in place and then cutting out. So when you come to cut out your second sleeve, you can use this cut sleeve effectively as your pattern piece. So you need to flip the cut fabric over so that you end up with a left and right side and match up all the grid lines in the pattern and your cut piece should pretty much disappear into the fabric now. So then you're just gonna use that as a guide to cut it out and make sure that you transfer the notches onto that as well. Next thing that you might wanna match is the front pockets. The other option would be to cut the pockets on the bias as well. So you could do that and then you don't need to worry about matching them. So you would just do the same as what you did for the back yoke and draw on those um, grid lines that are at a 45 degree angle to the, the, the straight grain of the pockets to cut them on the bias. But if you do want to match them and you want them to sort of blend in and kind of be invisible, I actually added, just added a little button onto mine so that you, they would sort of stand out a little bit. I don't use the pockets for anything. In fact, I've sewn them closed. They don't even have a proper buttonhole in them. Um, but I just, yeah, I put the button on there to show that there was a pocket. Um, but obviously they match, they do blend in quite a bit. So what you need to do is fold the top seam and hem allowance on the pocket and then mark any other seam allowances on as well and then place that pattern piece on the cut front bodice aligning with the pocket marking. So you're going to have to cut out each pocket for the left and front, left and right individually they're not going to be the same then unfold the seam hem allowance and take a photo of the pocket position and um, then you're going to place the pattern piece onto your uncut fabric and match up the pattern so if you're using the photo method just play pay particular attention to the four corners of the pattern piece make sure that they're at the same position as in your picture then just make sure they're clearly labeled like this is the pocket for the left this is the pocket for the right and um, because they will be different because the checks are unlikely to be exactly at the same points for each pocket on each side then we've got the cuffs and the collars to cut out so for the cuffs because they've got pleats in them um, and the sleeves have got pleats where they insert into the cuffs you're not going to be able to match exactly around there I probably wouldn't worry about it too much. I actually also really like just wearing my sleeve sort of rolled back, in which case you can't really see the cuffs anyway. Um, you could, in theory, you could match them to, to the section where the pleats aren't there. Uh, and then it would obviously just be sort of offset where the pleats were. So you can decide yourself what sort of personal preference and the depth of check matching you're going to go to on that one. But for the collar and the button band, what I would, so what I did on this, this one that I'm wearing right now, because I cut my back yoke out on the straight grain and I'd match the same point of the check on, you know, on the center back of the yoke and then the center back of the back bodice. I then did the same bit of the check on the on the collar as well, on the outer collar, um, so that it would match all the way down. But if you've cut it out on the bias, if you've cut the back yoke out on the bias, then obviously that won't be as much of a factor anyway. So the key thing really is just making sure that it's cut on the straight grain. Again, drawing the full shape of the collar out can help as well. Put those grid lines on it too because you want you want them to be you want the collars to be symmetrical you want it once you're actually wearing your shirt that you can see the same bit of the check left and right as opposed to necessarily like specifically matching anywhere else for the the collar stand you can't really see it and um, obviously on the outside at the back it's under the collar you can't see it there on the inside you know if you're wearing your collar open a little bit then obviously you sort of see it again making sure it's symmetrical is, is a factor and um, but if you you know again you can decide what depth of check matching you want to go to you can you can just make sure that the center fold line of the the collar stand is at the same point as it is on the collar um, 
I actually did do that on this one, but obviously you can't really totally tell. Um, again, it just depends what level of depth you want to go to in the check matching. So for the grain line archer, that is all of the pattern pieces cut out. Um, and as I said before, that is the main hard work done of matching the checks is getting everything cut out in the first place. When you come to sew it, it'll almost be like you use the checks kind of like how you use notches in a way. Um, because you want to make sure that they're all sort of matching up. So then when you come to put, you know, for example, when you come to put the button, placket button band onto that right front bodice, you're going to want to make sure that as you pin it, you're matching up all the checks as you go. You can baste seams with a nice long stitch length before you sew it with a regular stitch length, just so that if they don't match up exactly, it's just a bit easier to unpick. So once you've got it basted in place, you can just sew over it again with your regular stitch length. If you do have a walking foot for your machine, that can really help as well because it just helps to feed the fabric in, uh, you know, nice and evenly. So that can stop any shifting happening in your fabric between the two layers as you come to sew it as well. But essentially, the hard work is kind of done and you just need to, you know, you just need to take your time as you're sewing your seams and just, you know, pay attention to things a little bit more in terms of pinning where the checks are rather than just focusing on the notches, which is what you would do if you were just sewing something with a plain fabric. So I hope that has helped explain it. I know it is a lot. As I said before, it is something that you really have to get your teeth stuck into and that you have to enjoy. So hopefully just seeing all of those steps through the example of the Green Line Archer shirt as well just gives you a little bit of confidence that you can maybe tackle something like this. I personally find it like really satisfying. I just relish in those things, but I know that that, you know, it's not for everyone. So please don't be hard on yourself if you're like, no, I've just not got the time or patience to do that. It doesn't matter. And, um, you know, there's plenty other things in the world that we can sew um, without having to worry about check matching if it's not really your bag. So if you do have any questions or comments at all, feel free to leave them on this video. If you want like a really quick answer to anything, you're looking for any help, you can always just email the shop as well. G&G &G team and I are always more than happy to help if you've got any questions or you're sort of getting stuck with anything. And all of the information that I've shared in this video is in my blog post that goes with the video too. So if you find it a little bit easier to sort of read things or look at photos, then you can access the, the, the same information there as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, do hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. And I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.